Welcome back. Uh, well, mark equity markets are still holding uh, very well for the moment, uh, crossing that 200-day uh, moving average, standing above the 11,000 mark for the first time since the 6th of March. Uh, so let's discuss debt funds now. Uh, we have seen the debt fund market itself getting impacted over the past year or so by several uh, uh, accidents, so to speak. The first of them was the standstill agreement with the SL Group, which rattled several debt funds. And then you had, of course, DHFL, uh, Yes Bank's 81 bonds, uh, some of the ADAG def uh, group company defaults. So debt funds have not had it easy. But uh, are we now reaching a trough? Are things looking up? And are they getting a lot of help from the complete crash in bank deposit rates or are still people moving from funds uh, to the safety of bank deposits? For that discussion, Suyas Chaudhary of IDFC Mutual Funds and V. Srinivasan, former Deputy Managing Director of Axis Bank. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, well, first to you, Suyash, uh, is the wind at least starting to blow differently are you seeing a troughing out of this fear towards some of the debt fund categories? So, Lata, uh, first of all, the quality part of the debt fund market has had a phenomenal last one and a half, two years, uh, where assets under management have grown uh, substantially. And there's, therefore, there's, there's basically a move towards quality, whether be it within uh, fixed income mutual funds or uh, bank deposits. Uh, yes, there is an element of stability over the last two to three months, uh, but the important caveat there is the stability still pertains to the quality part of the non AAA market. So, you know, the good AA, AA plus manufacturing and NBFC companies are, uh, are what are getting uh, the bulk of the benefit. There is still a substantial uh, wedge between the haves and the have nots uh, in the debt market, so to speak. Uh, there are companies uh, where People are just not sure about the future uh, business prospects or balance sheet quality. And those companies still, unfortunately, are uh, unable to compress their risk premium, whereas the quality part of the market continues to uh, rally uh, as far as uh, bond deals are concerned, including money market deals. Oh, yes, one can see that for sure, Suyash. But uh, let me get the banker in and then we are coming back to you with lots more questions. Uh, 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 Srini, you know, it's not an enviable position at all that a banker faces in. Uh, HDFC bank results apart. There are problems uh, all over the place. Uh, for excess cash, all that a banker gets is 3.35%. And I think the average cost of money for any bank would be upwards of 5%. Uh, so do you think there will be a push factor uh, from banks to NBFCs or will uh, deposits continue to seek the safety? of banks so if you look at uh, what has happened over the last uh, 12 18 months i think uh, it takes a very brave banker to put out risk right at this point of time i think risk aversion is likely to continue and i think uh, the phase we are in banks getting dumped in deposits even at rates of five and a half five seventy five percent for one year uh, means that their overall cost including infrastructure and branches and stuff like that is going to be another almost two percent and including reserve costs. So all the lending we are doing, especially to AAA corporates, is actually negative carry in my view, and therefore, names are actually going to be under pressure. So banks, I agree, have an unenviable task of too much liquidity and non, not knowing where to give it, because the people who possibly can give them reasonable return are people who they wouldn't want to put out risk at this point of time, especially since we don't know what's going to happen post-August, what's the out outlook as far as the whole economy, I think risk aversion will continue and banks have a very tough job on hand. Would bankers do something to voluntarily push away a liability? I mean, it's so correctly worded liability. Would banks want not to have deposits? Can they cut rates further? Will they dare do it? How will bankers answer this problem? Because however you answer it, the mutual fund may benefit. Well, the mutual fund is not like actually benefiting. If you look at what Suyash is saying, that they are also at the quality end of the curve, which is primarily AAA. And therefore, transmission there is also totally complete, if not more than 100%. And therefore, money market rates, short-term rates, debentures, everything is going to be extremely low levels. Therefore, whatever happens to bank deposit rates, the mutual funds are going to have the same problem because the finding good entities where they can put out money and sort of sleep well, I think very few people, and therefore, therefore, you're going to have Mutual fund returns also coming down. It is not like mutual funds are going to run to NBFCs today. 
So the problem is not different between banks and mutual funds. It's a question of is there risk appetite to try and go towards the riskier portion of the curve away from the quality port, quality end. And that right now I think uh, is a bit premature in my view. Exactly. It's also very disconcerting for an investor, right, when debt mutual funds which are perceived as safe are shut down unceremoniously. But Suyash, I want to come to you on this. What do you see as the way forward? Uh, do debt funds still have a place in an investor's portfolio? Because the situation got only aggravated by job losses, you know, the collapse of the services sector, etc. Um, what do you see as, say, the next three to six months? So, you know, again, just as uh, one distinguishes between, uh, you know, let's say a, a AAA bank and a non-AAA bank or a AAA NBFC and a lower rated NBFC, so there are various uh, risk profiles of debt mutual funds. And like I said, over the last two years, uh, the good risk profile of funds have actually gained massively in assets under management. So, therefore, I would think the part that is struggling is a small subset of the entire. It's an important part, nevertheless. But it belongs to a subset where traditionally liquidity has been low. Uh, so I refer basically to the A and below a part of the market and where liquidity issues have been accentuated because of this unprecedented growth crisis that we are in uh, this calendar year uh, onwards. Uh, I think the resolution is, is basically a better tranching of risk profile in the mind of the investor as well. Uh, and uh, to be able to perceive the quality part of debt mutual funds as intermediation vehicles that provide liquidity diversification and some sort of a tax advantage uh, depending upon your tax bracket. So I think these are the three large uh, USPs that debt mutual funds have to operate under. And they have to operate under a macro umbrella that we are actually at this juncture in our financial development in you know intermediation vehicles for savings and not necessarily funding vehicles for lower rated entities in the market. So India's stage of financial market development is, is at a point uh, where investor awareness still needs to rise, where liquidity in the secondary market for lower rated paper has to be better before we can think about debt mutual funds as uh, financiers for uh, lower rated papers on a sustained basis. Ah, uh, Suyash, two years ago, why, or three years